hello this is lecture 7 of md triple to 3 so before we proceed to the mathematics i need to make two announcement first thing is the assignment one is available on the course web page you can have a look at that and the lecture notes will be available on the course web page and also in the youtube uh, description there will be google drive link so you can have a look at that if you, if you find any typos or anything any extra information that you think is should be added in that please feel free to email, email me uh, so that's about assignment and uh, lecture notes now in last two weeks we had three sessions per week monday thursday and friday from this week there will be only two sessions monday and thursday now uh, the friday session is uh, is uh, allotted to uh, ta session the google meet link will be available in the course web page you can join the ta session from 5:30 to 6:30 on friday that's all the non mathematics part uh, now so in last sessions what we have seen is the uh, is the notion of sequences of real numbers and we mentioned about four special class of sequences what are those so let me denote the sr was uh, the notation for, is the notation for sequences in r then we mentioned this sequence first is bounded sequence in r bsr then we mentioned about monotone sequences in r then convergence sequence in r cr for convergence sequence in r then we mentioned cauchy sequence in r these are the four sequences that you mentioned in 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 last session we, we have said only the definition of these we didn't say anything about any, any extra details about this only the definition and uh, that's all we didn't do any examples so in this session and uh, maybe in the next two sessions we will do some examples of we will see some examples of sequences then we will see which of them are bounded monotone uh, convergent and cauchy okay so what is a sequence a sequence is a is a just a map from n to r right? that was the definition of sequence now what what is it supposed to do for each element n belongs to n it should give an element a n in r this is this is the description that we, we are looking for L let us study the basic thing so now given n belongs to n we want an element in r right that's what uh, that's what the sequence does now the first example is irrespective of what n is i mean if i don't if i don't can, if i don't really care about n i want to declare a n to be a single element for each n suppose let us take 11 a n is equal to 11 for every n belongs to n this is a sequence that is a description a from n to r is defined as follows a n is equal to 11 for every n belongs to n i let on again again for every n belongs to n this is a sequence this is called constant sequence we will do one more example again the same thing for each n belongs to n we need an element a n in r that we need we need to make, make a choice now observe that n is already subset of r right Th that is what we know about n so uh, instead of looking for some element in r let us simply take this n itself all we need is an element of r n is already element of n so it is a subset of r so we will declare this a n to be just n for every n belongs to n this we are calling as identity sequence now if you remember what we have done for sequences we mentioned some property of uh, sr what is it the addition multiplication are it inverse multiplied inverse of the of this set of real numbers induce an operations induce a collection of operations on sr in the sense for each two sequences one can talk about their addition their multiplication given a sequence one can talk about their are it inverse minus a if a is a sequence from n to r minus a is a sequence from n to r you know the definition i already mentioned in the last time then if a sequence is non zero it, it doesn't take zero anywhere 
then we have the multiplied inverse 1 by a. So, we will try to apply those operations for this for these two sequences. So, first thing is what? Let us take the addition for n belongs to n, a n we will declare it to be addition of these two 11 plus n. for all n belongs to n. This is a sequence, right? this is obtained by adding this sequence to this sequence. Now, let us take the multiplication for every n belongs to n, I need an element a n, I want it to be multiplication of this and this. So, that is 11 times n, 11 times n for every n belongs to n. What else do we need to write down here? Alt inverse, right? So, a n is equal to alt inverse of 1 of this. 11 alt inverse is minus 11, but that is anything as constant. So, yeah, we could write that also, but we will write, we will take the alt inverse of n. So, that is minus n for every n belongs to n. Now, what else is remaining? Multiplied inverse n belongs to n, a n is equal to 1 by n. I am already writing here n belongs to n, I am writing forever for every n belongs to n again here. This should be sufficient, but I am just for, yeah, I am just writing that. Now, as I said, first thing that we need to check is whether they are bounded or not, that is what we need to check. Let us recall the notion of bounded, bounded sequences. What is a bounded sequence? A sequence A is said to be bounded if there are two elements in R m and m, m comma m belongs to R such that for every n belongs to n, the element a n lies between this m and this m, this is true for every n belongs to n. If this is the case, then we call the sequence to be a bounded sequence. If you observe, this has a one can think of it is in the following way. One can simply take the image a n, this is subset of R, asking existence of two elements with this property is same thing as saying that a n is bounded. So, a sequence being bounded is same thing as saying the image of the sequence is bounded. See, this does not happen in the other case of sequences in the sense just by looking at the image of the sequence we are giving a name for that that it is a bounded sequence a bounded sequence but this will not do in the case of say cauchy convergent monotone the image of a sequence does not determine the property any of those three spherical classes only for bounded we have this kind of situation that you need to understand uh, in the sense, even though the image may be very nice, the sequence may not be any of those Cauchy convergent monotone. We will see some examples for that. We will see that image is very nice, but the, the sequence is very ill behaved. It is not Cauchy convergent monotone, nothing. We will see some examples related to that. So, this is what we need to check. Suppose somebody gives us, gives us a sequence, we need to see the image of the sequence and then see if it is bounded or not. That is what that is all we need to check. So, let us take the first sequence. What is it? the constant sequence a n is equal to 11, a from n to r is given by the description a n is equal to 11 for every n belongs to n. So, what is the image of n then? This is simply the singleton set 11, right? This singleton is bounded, no? Convince yourself that every singleton is bounded r, every finite set is bounded. So, this is bounded subset of r. So, this sequence whatever we are starting with is a bounded sequence. Okay, the next sequence is n to r is given by a of n is equal to n for every n belongs to n. What is the image of this sequence? a of n is what? See, this is identity map. If you are treating this as a, if, if this can be treated as identity map, 
So, a of n is just n. Now, the question is is this a bounded uh, subset of R? We have seen before that this is not a bounded subset of R, right. So, this sequence is uh, not a bounded sequence. Okay. Let us do for the other thing a into r defined as a n is equal to the addition 11 plus n for every n belongs to n. Right. So, so, suppose this is bounded sequence. What does it mean? It means there are two elements m and m in r such that we have this condition right, for every n belongs to n. What is this an? An here is 11 plus n. So, we will write that here 11 plus n less than m for every n belongs to n. One can just subtract 11 from all three sides. So, what this gives me what minus 11 plus m is less than or equal to n uh, less than or equal to m minus 11. What uh, this is true again for every n belongs to n. What does this say? This says m minus 11 is an upper bound for this n, which means n is bounded above, but we already know n is not bounded above. So, this is a contradiction. There is no element m with the previous property which suggested that n is bounded above. So, this says this is a contradiction. So, that there is no there is no element m and m. With the, with the property that this uh, a n is bounded by those two elements. So, this sequence is not bounded. Now, let us do the other things also. What we have covered what? We have covered 11 plus n. We have seen a, this is not bounded. We have seen this also not, not bounded. We will see these two now. So, consider the sequence a n is equal to 11 n. The, the same trick, suppose it is bounded, there are two elements m and m such that we have this condition for all n belongs to n. Again here observe, here we have subtracted 11 from those three elements of R, the inequality remains same. Here we are dividing these three by 11, what do we get? m by 11 and this 11 is gone and this is m by 11. What does this say? This is true again for all n belongs to n. This says the set n is bounded above by this element which is not true a contradiction. So, this says this sequence uh, whatever this is not bounded, well, it is not a bounded sequence that is all. Now, we need to do one more thing. What is it? Minus n and 1 by n. There are two more things. So, a n is equal to minus n for all n belongs to n. Th that is the description of a. That for now, a is this. This is, this is our a. Now, suppose there are two elements. Again, the same thing. M and m such that this is the case for all it belong to n. One can you might already know this if you do not know you should try to convince yourself that that is true. If I have a, an equality if I, if I multiply if I put minus on, on two sides the inequality will interchange. So, this is same thing as saying minus m is greater than or equal to n greater than or equal to minus capital M. This is true for all in belongs to n. What does this say? This says this minus m is an upper bound for n. So, it is bounded above. We have seen four times here itself. It is not the case. It is not bounded above. So, again a contradiction. This is this sequence is not bounded sequence. Right. Now, le let us do the last thing a n is equal to 1 by n for all n belongs to n. 
a was from n to r. Now, observe the following. Again, the same thing that we whatever we have done here, we will try to do the same thing here also. We are looking for elements m and m such that this is true for all n belongs to n. See, you might already know this is a positive element, 1 by n is positive. So, this is greater than 0 always. So, if I write any element here, say minus 9, minus 11 or just 0, this, this is still true. So, left side we have, we have an element which was easy, very easy. Now, let us look for the right side. So, we are looking for an element m such that 1 by n is less than or equal to m. This is same thing as saying 1 is less than or equal to n times m for every n belongs to n. See, the very first element of this set n is greater than or equal to 1. If you multiply by m, it will still be greater than or equal to 1. But even if you do not multiply by anything, it is still greater than or equal to 1, right? For every n belongs to n, this n, this is true already, already n is greater than or equal to m. So, you can actually ignore m. In the sense, you can just keep m to be 1, right? multiplying by 1. So, n times 1, this is true. So, one can write down this m to be 1. So, this says the sequence a n is equal to 1 by n is uh, bounded by, for example, by these two elements. So, what we have seen is out of these 6 examples, this 11 n, 11 plus 11 plus n, 11 n minus n, 1 by n. Out of all these, out of these 6 examples, only 2 are bounded, this one and this one. The other are unbounded. This is unbounded sequence, this is unbounded sequence, unbounded sequence, unbounded sequence. So, now we were trying to check boundedness of those two sequences, we have, we have figured out whether they are bounded or not. Now, the next thing is to check for convergence. Let us recall how did we do, how did we define convergence of a sequence? The idea is to immediate the notion of minimum supremum for sequences, right? Minimum of a subset of real numbers is an element, a single element describing the whole set A to a large extent. I mean, it describes one of the property of that set A. So, similarly, we are trying to do the same thing for sequences. We want to look for an element L belong, we want to look for a single element of real numbers to describe the whole sequence to a large extent. That, that was the, that was the similarity between infimum, supremum and, uh, uh, the, uh, and the convergence of, of a sequence. If you see on the left side, on the left side means the infimum supremum uh, situation, the starting point of the, the, the discussion is that your, your subset of R should be bounded above, below, depending on what you want to do. So, unless it is bounded above, you cannot talk about supremum, unless you can, unless it is bounded below, you cannot talk about infimum. So, maybe similar thing is true for convergence also, but the definition of convergence we have given separately because of the similarity, it might be the case that if a sequence is unbounded, if a, if a subset is bound, unbounded, there is no notion of infimum supremum. Similarly, if a sequence is unbounded, maybe the sequence is not convergent or if a sequence is unbounded, the possibility of it being convergent may be negligible. I mean, if you, if you are trying to just imme the, immediate the idea of in, infimum supremum, this might be the case. We will anyway see the precise statements very soon, maybe in the uh, next session or next to the next session. But this is what you should understand, that if you are trying to immediate the notion of infimum supremum, unbounded sequences are uh, less likely to be convergent. This is what I want you to keep in mind for some time. We will sharpen that statement and uh, give precise statement very soon, but for now that is what it is. So, the smart thing is to look for convergence for these two first, because the chance of this being convergent is slightly more by the, by the discussion we had just now. This being convergent, slightly less when compared to this. So, we will first do this and then we will look for uh, this. So, now what? We are looking for convergence of the sequence a n is equal to 11 for all n belongs to n. So, this we are looking for the possibility of convergence of this sequence. So, the first thing that we need to do is we need to guess an element first. So, if there is an element L belongs to R, 
to which the sequence converge then we need we need some things to satisfy what is it this is the starting point we need to get guess the l first then given epsilon positive there is an element n belongs to r n belongs to n such that for every n bigger than n something happens that was the definition of convergence right what happens modulus of an minus l is less than epsilon this is true for every n greater than this n that we have chosen based on epsilon positive one can find n belongs to n such that something happens what is it this difference is less than epsilon for every n greater than this n now let us rewrite let us write down what is n a n for us a n is 11 right 11 minus l is less than epsilon now we need to make a guess about the possible l suppose l is 12 suppose l is 12 then what happens this difference 11 minus 12 is minus 1 modulus of minus 1 is 1 this implies epsilon is greater than 1 there is a small issue here what does this say if the sequence the if the identity sequence a n the 11 sequence converts to 12 then the only possible epsilon that I can choose is greater than 1 but if, if suppose I choose epsilon to be half it half is positive by the by the definition of convergence there should be n such that after something this happens but even in that case I am getting epsilon to be greater than 1, but epsilon is equal to 1 by 2, 1 by 2 is less than 1, so this is contradiction. So, 12 cannot be a limit of the sequence a n, the sequence that we have said just now. So, suppose let us write 13, what happens? This will become 2, right? So, that is still worst, that for this only it is not happening, so for this there is no chance, that if I, if you choose epsilon to be 1, this is already gone. So, anything greater than 12, does not seem to work. So, let us take less than that. So, 12 was not working, 13 is not working, 14 will not work at all. So, let us take a maybe something uh, less than that. Let us take 10. Let us take 10. Now, what? L is equal to 10. 11 minus 10 is what? 1. Epsilon will be greater than 1. The same issue here also. If I choose epsilon to be half, this is not going to happen. So, contradiction. So, uh, it turns out that any number less than less than 10 is not working, any number greater than 12 is not working. So, maybe say, maybe x may be maybe there is an element L satisfying this property, it, it might be there, we do not know. Let us take let us keep 11 as a as a supporting point let us take the following l is equal to 11 plus delta for delta belong delta positive right we are just looking uh, 11 belongs to this interval i have not mentioned this definition uh, anywhere before but assuming you know what interval is maybe i will write in the lecture notes what interval is and maybe i will give one or two examples so x belong well, the limit should be here only because less than this there is no chance greater than this there is no chance so this l should be belong an element of 10 comma 12 11 is a middle point of this so i am keeping that as a that as a reference point and looking for any element can be is, will be of this form right 11 plus delta if it is on, if it is on the right side of 11 it will be 11 minus delta if it is on the left side of 11. So, let us take this first 11 plus delta. Now, let us ask what happens to this condition 11 minus L is what 11 minus 11 minus delta this is gone. So, this is equal to delta less than epsilon. See this element whatever we are uh, hoping as the limit of a sequence should be independent of the epsilon that I am choosing right only n should depend on where did I write that 
only n should depend on epsilon. This limit L should not depend on epsilon. So, let us assume it is of the form 11 plus uh, delta for some delta. Now, if I choose my delta, if I choose my epsilon to be less than delta, right? Once delta is given, whatever this, this procedure is, this should be true for every epsilon positive, right? So, if I choose my epsilon to be in 0 comma delta to be less than delta, then this is not going to happen. Delta is fixed. If I choose my epsilon in this, this is not going to happen. Yeah, so 11 plus delta cannot be a limit point, cannot be a uh, convergence, cannot be a point of convergence for the sequence n is equal to 11. It may be true 11 minus delta might, might work, right? We do not know yet. 11 minus delta might work. So, if that is the case, then what do we have? Just plus here, this is still the case. So, if you, if you choose epsilon to be between 0 and, le, 0 and delta, this is not going to happen with respect to how you try. So, it looks like none of the elements might work if delta is positive. So, only one element is remaining now. What is it? 11. So, if you apply, if you think of L to be 11, this means what? Minus 11, this L is gone. So, this is this also not there. So, this is what? 0. 0 is already less than epsilon every time, whatever epsilon you choose that will be greater than 0. So, this condition is satisfied. So, now what we realize is sequence a n converges, it converges to 11, converges to 11, this is the idea. Let us do one more example of the sequence a n, a n is equal to 1 by n, this was the sequence, we are looking for convergence of this sequence. So, there should be some l belongs to r with the property that you already know, I am repeating again. So, given epsilon positive, there should be n belongs to n such that modulus of n minus l is less than epsilon for every. By the way, what is a n here? 1 by n. You might have seen this kind of thing before, given epsilon positive, there is n belongs to n such that something close to this happens for every n greater than n. What was that? When we are trying to prove that around when we are trying to prove that n is bounded above, not bounded above, we realize something similar to this. What was that? We have seen that 1 by n is less than epsilon for every n greater than n. If you, if you compare these two, suppose we declare L to be 0, which means this is not there, L to be 0 then this condition is same thing as this condition, right. So, this concludes that this sequence converges to 0, because they, they, we want this to be true, right, but this we, this is already there. When we are trying to do for the do, do the unboundedness of n, uh, bonded, uh, not bounded above nature of n, we have seen this kind of statement, right. Given epsilon positive, there is a n belongs to n such that for every n greater than or equal to n, 1 by n is less than epsilon, this we have seen before already. So, this suggests what? This sequence a n converges, converges to 0, that is what you have said here, right. Now, let us look at the other sequences. What are those? They are the identity sequence 11 plus n, 11 n minus n, we will go 1 by 1. So, let us assume that this, uh, the identity sequence a n is convergent. So, now we are checking for convergence of the sequences that we mentioned before n, 11 n, 11 plus n, minus n that all that we will see now. So, let us start with a n is equal to n, the sequence a into r is given by the data a n is equal to n for every n belongs to n. So, this is the sequence that we have uh, that we are given. Now, let us assume that this converges to some element l. So, there should be some element l belongs to r with certain conditions. So, what is the definition of that? Given epsilon positive, there is an element n belongs to n such that for every n greater than equal to n something happens. What is it? Modulus of a n minus l is less than epsilon. By the way, what is a n? A n is n here, right? So, let us remove this a n and simply write n. 
this means minus epsilon less than n minus l less than epsilon. Let us remove this minus l part by adding l on uh, all sides. So, this gives us l minus epsilon less than n less than epsilon plus l for every n of this form. Now, what does this say? This says this element epsilon plus l is an upper bound for this set. What is the set? n, n plus 1 dot dot dot. That is what an upper bound of a set is, right? An element, an element of an element is a upper bound if that is greater than every element of that set, right? That is what it is. This should also tell you that this element is an upper bound for this set also. Why? Convince yourself. See, what does this mean? This epsilon plus L is somewhere here, but 1, 2, everything is already less than n. At least if it, if it is, a, if n is equal to 2, it is already less, it is already greater than 1, right? So, this element, if it is greater than n, should be greater than 1 or an element less than that. So, this element is a is an upper bound for the whole set n. This is this is n. What do we know? That n is not bounded above. So, this is a is a contradiction, this gives a contradiction. So, the sequence a n n to r defined as n is equal to n for every n uh, belongs to n is not a convergent sequence. There cannot be an element l belongs to r with this property. Why? L let us do one more time. If there is a such element, then for every epsilon there should be some element n belongs to n such that this is true for all n greater than n, but this is something I am just rewriting this in this way l minus epsilon less than n less than epsilon plus l this is true for all n greater than equal to n. So, if, if we ignore this part just ignore this part for some time this condition along with this says this element is an upper bound for this set excluding the 1, 2, 3 and so on whatever it is till n, but th this n is already greater than those 2, 1, 2, 3 right. If, if it is 2, it is already greater than 1, 3 already greater than 2 and 2 and 1. So, this element is greater than n implies this element should be greater than any of the elements before, before n. So, this suggests that this element is an upper bound for the whole set. So, this suggests that uh, epsilon plus l is, a, is an upper bound for the set n which is a contradiction. We know that the set n is not bounded above there can never be an element in R that gives an upper bound for the set n. So, this says this a n is a, not a convergence sequence. Now, what are the remaining things 11 n 11 plus n 11 n minus n. So, these are the re remaining things now. So, assuming you have done the exercise that I have mentioned before about uh, the algebra of sequences. What did I say? If I take two sequences, if they are convergent, their sum is convergent, their product is convergent, the added inverse is convergent, the modulated inverse is convergent. This is what I said. I asked you to check. Assuming you have checked that, using that, let us prove this. Let us, let us examine this, not prove. We do not know what to prove yet. So, suppose this is 11 plus n is convergent sequence. What does this say? This says 11 plus n, the sequence 11 plus n, if I add any other convergent sequence, the result should be convergent, right? So, let us add this sequence with a, with a minus sign. A n is equal to minus 11 is also sequence. 11, for 11 it was convergent, for minus 11 it will be convergent again. Now, add this sequence, the right inverse of that and this a n. What do we get? 11 plus n minus 11 is n. So, if I assume this is convergent because this is already convergent, this plus minus of this should be convergent. What is this? n. What do we know about n? The sequence a n not convergent. So, <laughs> this fellow cannot be convergent sequence, right? Now, let us take this 11 n. We know 
the 11 is convergent sequence there is nothing special about the 11 any constant should be should work so instead of 11 one can take 1 by 11 right that's also convergent sequence if this is convergent this multiplied with any convergent sequence should be convergent 11 times n multiplied by 1 by 11 should be convergent sequence what is it 11 times n dot 1 by n is n so we get this sequence again what do we know about this sequence not convergent so this fellow cannot be convergent sequence gone this is also gone this is also gone all about this suppose this is convergent sequence as i said just now the arid inverse of a convergent sequence should be convergent so if this is convergent n should be convergent sequence n is, n is equal to n should be convergent sequence but it is not convergent sequence so this is not a convergent sequence so out of how many 1 2 3 4 5 6 out of 6 sequences only these two are convergent sequences so we felt something right in the in the before few minutes if a sequence is not bounded it is unlikely that it is convergent this was not bounded sequence and we have proved that it is not a convergent sequence none of these four are convergent sequences so maybe we are we are getting some uh, close to whatever uh, is a correct statement we will see in the next uh, session but we were getting close that if, if it is not bounded sequence maybe the convergence may not happen we will see what happens so that is about the sequences some examples of sequences and uh, about bounded sequences only two are bounded sequences these four are unbounded sequence then we have checked that this is a convergent sequence and this also convergent sequence but all these four are not convergent sequence so that is all for uh, this session in the next session we will see some more examples of uh, sequences and we will we'll try to see whether they are Cauchy convergent etcetera that is all.